Hey, Rigsters here. Welcome to another video, this time on Forza Horizon 5. There won't be spoilers in this, and for this uh, video, I'll be taking an Impala Super Sport from 1996 and doing some kind of like a different tuning guide in particular. And also just to blab about the game and stuff, so we'll get right into it. So this particular car's history, back in the day, this was intended as the answer to the Ford Taurus SHO. Originally had a V8 with four speeds, automatic, and yeah, <laughs> it's a brick. Basically, the way this game works is a pretty much similar to the previous version, which is Forza Horizon 4, but they added some new features, such as in the engines tab here, they've reorganized where the intake location is, they changed where the flywheel location is, that kind of stuff. But one other nice addition, and that if many people have already pointed out, and this actually was pioneered by EA in Need for Speed Heat, is you can rev the engine. So this is what it sounds like without any mods. Yeah, it's a nice V8 rumble already. So, basically, the tuning philosophy what I'm going to do for this car, since it starts at Class C, which is just one step above the lowest class in this game, which is Class D, which is the slowest, doesn't necessarily mean it's not fun. But um, for some people like me, I want it to go a little bit faster. Now, there's a couple ways you can do this. You can do it the more serious way, and it's what a lot of my friends do. Or you could do it the goofy meme way, which is to go into conversion right here. And you could swap out the stock V8 for like a bigger V8, for example. Put in a turbo diesel. Or all the way to a 7 liter V8 twin turbo. A racing 7.2 liter. And a V12. Um, the V12 in particular is the most silliest and ludicrous option you can do. I mean, you can do it. It's just... I don't think it's gonna, it's not very realistic. The other V8 options actually are pretty reasonable. And the diesel one is pretty funny as well. But for this build, I'm gonna stick with the standard engine. And just like before in Forza Horizon 4, hey, look at that, all right. Um, you can convert from rear wheel drive to all wheel drive in this particular case. Uh, front wheel drive cars in this game, just like before, as I've noted before, can switch between rear wheel and all wheel, but for rear wheel, you just only get two options usually. And you also can add force induction, like twin turbos and two superchargers. Now, unlike in Horizon 4, in 5, the superchargers actually sound even more different than they do before. And this is without exhaust mods, this is what the Positive displacement supercharger sounds like. And this is what the centrifugal supercharger sounds like. Hmm. It's a little faint. I'll have to bot the exhaust so it denotes better. That's the problem. Alright, so what I ask myself this question when I do these tunes, what do you tend to do with this car? Do you tend to rally with it? Do you tend to go off-road? Do you want to drag? Like go a quarter mile, half mile, or a mile mark in a straight line? Or do you want to make it like a racer? Like do you want to tune for maximum grip? Or, you can also make it a drift car. And yes, as ridiculous as this looks, you probably could make this a drift car and make it drift really well. I'm not really good at drifting, in particular tuning-wise, but you could do it. I mean, it has rear-wheel drive, that's the most basic thing you usually need. You just have to have enough power and controllability with the slides. So for this build, I'm going to be making it a circuit racer 
to tune it maybe no higher than A class. I have to have to see with the tire compounds. So we'll start with the tires and rims first when we start doing these upgrades. Tire compounds have changed a lot over the previous one. You have a lot more options. You still have street and sport. Those are the usual. But now they have what's called semi-slick. That is the new standard race tire that still has some tread. As you can kind of see right here, the lighting's a little dark. Right about here. Yeah, that probably is a good angle right about here. And you can see there's still tread there. But they also have its new slick race tires. And I know it's kind of hard to see with the lighting, but maybe it can show a better angle right here. But the lighting right here is, should show it better. There. As you notice, there's no grooves there. Reason being that slick tires are usually most useful on the circuit and when they're up to temperature. These typically will have more grip than the semi-slicks, but the semi-slicks are better for rain and mixed surfaces. You can also, if you really want to be silly, you can also put drift tire compound, which obviously is good for drifting. Rally, which is multi-purpose all-terrain that's good for some off-roading. Off-road race, off race tire. These are good for extreme off-road situations, but are very poor on the streets and stuff. It's not like it won't increase grip, but nowhere near as much as the street-focused tires. But they're very good for cross-country and snow, mud, hail, that kind of stuff. There's also, of course, Snow Tire. I believe when this game has, like, more season changes, it will definitely be, as the name implies, effective in snow and ice. And Drag Tire Compound's a little different in this game. This actually really is only well suited for going in a straight line. It does not add a lot of cornering grip. And then if I press the toggle button towards the bottom of your screen here, you can also see that the stat page has changed just a little bit. There's a couple of pages more you can cycle through. First cycle shows you the actual numbers. This shows you like it's estimated braking distances, how well it can corner, and estimated 0 to 60, 0 to 100 in top speed time in particular. For this build, since we're going to make it work on the streets, we're going to do semi-slick. When you do stock, you have to give it a moment to calculate. 0.83 to 0.82 Gs, 0 to 60 is 6.5 seconds. When you put the semi-slicks, that goes to 6.1, and the lot or Gs is 1.08 and 1.07 at 60 and 120, respectively. And also, uh, your stopping distance is shorter, which is what we want. So those add points to your build, which right now, if I go to tire list, we're now, now in class B just on the tires alone. I might be saying, well, why are you blabbing about tires? I want to add power. Well, the reason why you want to start with tires first more often than four, but you don't have to worry about it quite as often in five, is if you forget your tires, uh, you can pretty much forget about how much power you have. You're just going to slide everywhere. It did improve the grip in this game, so it's not as steep as a penalty, but it'll still will penalize you if you don't want to count for this. So with tire width, they do help still. I've noticed that you don't always have to go with the maximum width depending on the horsepower. In this case, we are going to add some power, at least to make it a Class A vehicle. It uh, does add some weight though, so I'm going to do it to 275 for the front. Now the rear can get really crazy diameters here. The bigger the diameter, the more contact and surface area you have to work with. Of course, the bigger it is, the heavier the tire as well. So you do pay a little bit of a weight penalty when you go from 255 millimeters to 345s. And you can visually see this too. It's a little tricky to see of this garage lighting is a bit tricky to get on camera here. It kind of looks comical when you go from that to max. 
You can kind of see the tire bulging a bit here. Let me just show it one more time. I love the lighting effects, by the way. The lighting and shadows of this game, massive improvement. The art and sound department have really stepped it up and made this game look and sound way better than it for, <laughs> in my humble opinion here. So, we're going to go from 255 to... Hmm, I think 285 is a good place to start. It, it sometimes will add more points the bigger you go. So we go from 629 to 1 point to 630. So we still got plenty of room to tune and upgrade to A class. Track width is still the same, except um, it sometimes occasionally adds two points instead of one to your upgrade point system. I always max those out. You don't have to max these out. You can do like a more moderate track width, but I just like that for handling reasons. That's just a preference from mine. Next thing they changed is the drive terrain. With the drive terrain, you still got the usual clutch, which I always do maximum. Transmission has received an improvement. So you, you normally have like sport, race, and that's it. Now you can do 7, 8, 9. Oh, good, you can't do 10. So in this particular build, you can do, if you want, a 10-speed transmission. It does add weight, though. Um, I would typically recommend not going higher than 8. Some cars on the street do benefit from 9, but I feel like 8, 6 to 8 is really more ideal for circuit and street races. You can't make it work with 9 and 10, but <laughs> if you're using like manual mode, it's a lot of button pressing. <laughs> I'm going to put an 8 in there. Drive line's the same. It just reduces weight, so that's what we want. Differentials have received an improvement. You can do sport, race, off-road, drift, or rally. The rally, drift, and off-road are new. And what these do, as far as I could see, is that they do a preset that's more suited for those situations. I have not tested to see how much of the handling model changes when you do one that's outside of your intended purpose, which in this case is race. So just to be on the safe side, I'm still going to do race. Alright, what else has changed? Platform and handwind doesn't really have changed much. I think the brakes, yeah, the brakes add more points to your upgrade system, so they do cost more to add. And of course, most of the time, I do either sport or race. In this case, we're going to do that so we can get the A quest sooner. Springs and dampening. It hasn't really changed much. It still works the same. Like, for example, if you want to go make this a rally car, can still put that on for example and the casters do change visually a little more like if you put on drift here you can see the tires turn inwards more that's good for drifting but not good for grip and with rally you can see the suspension go up and down like a low rider if you do it fast enough which i find quite humorous so to put on race here roll bars nothing's really changed there you either do one step or two, depending on your preference. Weight reduction. Now these add more points to the game than the previous one. In this case, um, in the old game, sometimes race weight reduction did like 20. This now does 40. So you gotta be careful in your, uh, if you're doing like a restrictive build, to make sure that you account for the weight reduction as well. This is probably the second most useful upgrade you can do to any vehicle in the game, barring anything else. We're definitely going to do that. Okay, so it's still well within A. Now we can tune the exhaust. So, one last time of what it sounds like before I start fiddling with that. So it sounds like stock exhaust. Now you don't have to purchase these, but you can preview the sounds. So we go from stock to street. Just give it a moment. Now there is a 
little bit of a minor delay, so you have to wait like half a second to three seconds before revving the engine. That's what street sounds like. And then go to sport. Oh, yep, it did the bug, so I have to wait. There we go. And as you noticed, when I went from street to sport, the sport had some added more pops and crackles from the unbent, unspent uh, exhaust being burned off, so it adds like a little pop and crackle. Which sounds pretty cool, I mean, how could you not like that from a V8? So now let's go to race. Hmm. Oh, I was a bug. Whoops. Wow. I accidentally glitched the game or something there. There we go. Now it's going to be Yeah, you hear that? That's the idle. That's a new effect they added as well, that the idling of the car, if you listen very closely. It just sounds so cool. So let's put that on there. So camshaft and intake also can change the pitch and tone of the engine. So let's go to the street. And then this is sport. I mean, I could do this for hours. I really could. Um, there's also race. So as you've noticed, as I've been going from street sport and race, that there's a lot more like angry higher pitched or deeper pitched wobbles as well. It's also a nice touch. Uh, when you add these valves, basically you're extending the rev range, so it like spools up or so it has like a louder chance, or flat, not louder, higher chance of sounding louder. Yeah, that's just cool. Now, as you've noticed, when I went from stock cams to race, I'm already in Class A because of some of the upgrades already. I'm already at 745 on Class A, just doing those two upgrades alone. You also have intake. This is what it sounds like on street. Now we go to sport. Now we go to race. Now you see here with uh, race to take, you hear a little more induction noise coming from the hood. Which is a nice touch. So I'm gonna add that on there. And I believe the intake manifold also may change the tone, so we'll do that real quick as well. This is on sport. Alright, and then we'll go to race. Doesn't really change much of the trombone of the engine, this was thought. So while we're doing that, the reason why I put race exhaust intake, uh, manifold intake, and camshaft is those are the most expensive 
points wise upgrades and also the coolest parts of the game that they really improved and made much better. And I just think it just sounds cool too. So another thing I want to do as I'm increasing power is I went from stock valves to race is to check on the chart here. Still not making a lot of power, but it's definitely much more than what we started with. The reason why I'm adding so much power is because it's intended to go fast around corners as well, so I need some acceleration and weight reduction, which in this case the pistons also do as well. The wheel is I usually save for last. Its main job is just to reduce weight. Now losing 14 pounds there is a cheap way of reducing weight if you don't have a lot of butt points left. And fuel system is just the same as before. Just the goal is just to add more power. Additions is another cheaper-ish way of adding power. And I think that's pretty much it for the power. You can do oil and cooling, but that also adds weight. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not going to do that. Alright, well, let's see here, so one last thing is arrow and appearance. Now for some cars, they added more than one option, so let's see what they have for the front here. <laughs> well, that is cool, but I don't want to really add weight there. There we go. So, unfortunately, for the Impala Super Sport, they only have two options. The second, the last one. The last one here is the most useful if you need downforce. I don't think I really need front downforce for this vehicle. Let's check the rear wings. Oh, I actually like that. That actually looks cool. It adds a little gunner, bleh, gunnery flap there. That's actually pretty nice. I'll add that on there. That actually adds class too. I wonder why it... Man, I'd get like a massive penalty for just adding... What, 10 pounds? Yeah, it's 3,005, 3,014. That's not much weight. Why would it drop my points doing that? Oh well, it's added on anyways. Side skirts. Let's see what we've got here. I don't really see a visual difference here. Oh. That's not a side skirt. That's a light. <laughs> huh? Why would I add that? I mean, it's cool if you're doing, like, a Impala cop car look, but that's just a visual thing in this case. Sometimes the side skirts do some really strange stuff in this game, but last time I checked, that's actually a roof modification, not a side skirt, which is near the door panels here. Don't know why they consider it that. Don't ask me, ask Forza. <laughs> I have no clue why they did that. Alright, so let's see what we have for conversion here. I might add some more power, because 439, I don't think is going to cut it. We could add turbos, positive displacement, or centrifugal supercharger. Hmm, I'm going to add centrifugal. The difference between positive and centrifugal supercharger is the centrifugal has a little more delay. Whereas positive is like constant boost pressure from lower RPM. This is more useful for drag racing. Like if you need additional power right from the get-go, they'll spin up and spool much quicker. To a reasonable standard. I mean, it's not really super laggy, but it's enough to make a difference. I would have had so difficult because I'm going to be spending more time driving in motion than need initial launch. So I'll add that on there. And let's see what it sounds like now with the stock uh, supercharger. Okay, let's see what it sounds like in sport. Now when you add these uh, higher levels of superchargers, they do change a little bit. Hmm. Let's see what race sounds like. Not much of a change. Doesn't really change as much. Sometimes the turbos add more of an effect than the superchargers, I've noticed. 
We'll add that on there. Let's see if we can add some more power, maybe. No, that's, that adds too much weight. You see, the reason why I'm just looking through this and going, nah, that adds too much weight is I'm going from 3085 to, say, 3163 is a pretty big jump. I mean, that is nice power, though. You know what? I'm gonna add it anyways. Just the inner core, just to add a smidge more performance out of the vehicle. Now the button's a little bit different on the Xbox controller. So you have to hit view basket. And they did change uh, another thing. You can hit go to if you want to see where that part is installed or if you want to go to it and change what you wanted in this list. Since I'm happy with that, does it buy and install? So now in theory, that is the first part of the Impala Super Sport of the parts. And a little bit of exhaust notes and blabbing. So I hope you enjoyed this video. This is Rick's Sears Journey. Signing off. This is the future.